before up the horse peak mountain and when she came to yet another ridge and looked over it to her surprise there she saw a beautiful blue lake the water shimmered in the crisp cool mountain air it was so blue and the waters were still like a mirror. All around the lake there were dense forests of cypress and pine trees. But the strange thing was that on the surface of the lake there was not a single leaf. And why? For when a leaf fell on the lake then Musin saw there was a lone wild goose that would come and glide down and swoop across the water and pick up the leaf and carry it away. Lucien thought, oh, if only I could bring this water to our village, then we could be sure of a good harvest and we would not starve. So the next day, when she came back with her axe, she went straight, she did not delay, as soon as she had her bamboo cut, she headed for the lake. She was determined to see if she could find some outlet, some way that she could make a channel perhaps, so that the water would flow down to her village. She looked around and began to walk around the narrow shore of the lake. The lake was surrounded by tall, towering cliffs and jagged, sharp rocks a great forest of pine and cypress. But there was no sign anywhere where she could make some kind of outlet. But suddenly, late in the afternoon, she came across a rock with a gate, or perhaps a, a sluice inside it. She was so excited she put down her her bamboo stalks and she went and she took hold of the rock and she tried to move the gate, to lift it, to open it, but it was jammed fast. Her axe was of no use at all. The rock was solid. How could she open it? And as she slumped down to the ground, again she heard a cry, that loud honk, and she looked up and she saw that lone wild goose come round her. Well, this indeed was the wild goose lake that she had heard the elders speak of when they told the tired tales in the long winter evenings. The goose came and landed on the shore, not so far away from her. The goose looked at her a moment and she said, Goose, can you help me? How can I bring water 
to my village. How can I open this gate? And the goose stretched forth its long neck and it said, you need to find the golden key. Musin didn't know whether she'd be more surprised that there was a golden key or that the goose was actually talking to her. But before she could even ask, but where can I find the golden? The goose had turned its head, opened its wings, flapped, and had taken off and was skimming away across the lake and disappeared. A golden key. And she looked again, and yes, there in the gate, there was a small keyhole. But of a golden key, there was no sign. So now, she carried on walking along the narrow shore, hoping that she might find this golden key. She came to a clump of cypress, and there, on a branch, was the most beautifully feathered parrot, with the feathers as bright as your dress, red and green. Lucin said to the parrot, please, can you tell me, where might I find the golden key? And the parrot looked at her, moved along the branch towards her, and said, first, you must find the third daughter of the Dragon King. For the Dragon King, make no mistake, is the one who guards the Golden Key to the Wild Goose Lake. And with that, he leant forward, spread his wings, and shoo! In a flash of red and green, the parrot was gone. Find the third daughter of the Dragon King? Where could that be? Musin carried on walking around the lake. She came to a great boulder and clambered over it, and on the far side, she found a grove of pine trees. And there, perched proudly, was a peacock on a low branch. And again, Musin said to him, trying maybe third time lucky, there'll be another talking bird. She said, peacock. Peacock, can you tell me, where can I find the third daughter of the Dragon King? And the peacock raised its head and looked at her and said, You must sing. For the third daughter of the Dragon King lives deep within the lake. She loves songs. Sing to her. Sing the songs that the village women sing, and she will come to you. And the peacock hopped off the branch and dropped a feather on the ground. And then it too flew away and disappeared into the forest. Lucin bent down and she picked up the feather. And then she began to sing. She had a beautiful voice, as fresh as the Orioles. She sang first of, of the snow, the snow falling in winter and covering those rough hillsides with its white winter wonder. She sang of the reeds beside the lake blowing in the strong autumn wind. And all the time she was looking and hoping that third daughter of the Dragon King would come to her. But there was no sign. And so she sang a new song. A song of flowers. Flowers blooming in the spring and covering the hillside with rich yellows and reds and blues and violets and sun. The water in the lake began to bubble, and there suddenly the water streamed and out of the lake came third daughter of the Dragon King, resplendent in her ruby red satin robes. She came to Musin and she said, Your songs are so beautiful. Deep in the lake I heard them. They are so strange and haunting, I could not resist. 
My father says that we must not talk with humans. So I have come in secret. I too like to sing, she said, but my voice is not as beautiful as yours. And Musin looked at her and said, tell me, are you the third daughter of the Dragon King? I am, said the young woman. And you, who are you? Why are you here? And Musin replied, saying, I am Musin. I live in one of the villages at the foot of your mountain. And I have come because I need to find the golden key to open the gate, that I may bring water to my village, or otherwise we will surely starve. And the third daughter said, Ah, it is my father. He keeps the golden key in a cave, a treasure cave beside the lake. But he will not let you take it, for he has placed a mighty eagle to keep guard of the cave. And she pointed up, and Musin looked, and there, on a great towering cliff, stood a massive eagle with a fearsome beak and terrible talons clinging onto the rock. Third daughter of the Dragon King said, he will surely tear to pieces anyone who even dares to try and enter that cave. Perhaps, perhaps your father would give it to me, said Musin. No, he will not help humans, said the third daughter. That is why he made the gate to keep the water. The only way that we may be able to get the key is when my father leaves his palace and flies to see the western lands. So Mimsin decided she would not go home that night but stay. She gathered soft pine branches and made herself a bed while her new friend, third daughter, went to the lake and caught them fish, which they cooked and ate and talked under the stars. When it was time for third daughter to return to the palace, she said farewell and promised to return. A day, two days passed, but then she came out from the lake again and said, now Lucin, now it is time. My father has gone away. And she led Musin under cover of the tall, towering reeds beside the lake, and they went closer and closer until third daughter was able to point out where was the treasure cave. And it was right beneath where the eagle was on guard and watching. How will we get past him? And Musin looked at her and said, we will see. And so the two women began to sing a beautiful, haunting song. And the eagle, high on the cliff, heard, cocked his head. He tried to see where was that sound coming from. And slowly, slowly, he began to come down from the rocks. And as he did so, the third daughter began to move further and further and further away and the eagle followed. When it was out of sight, Musin quickly, as quickly as stealth would allow, made her way to the entrance of the treasure cave. Inside she was almost instantly dazzled by the sheer brightness of so many treasures golden, gleaming treasures that were piled high on every rock, stone, ledge, and every crack and crevice. If she'd wanted to be rich for a lifetime, she could have simply taken anything and never worried about money again. But she wasn't looking for treasure. She only wanted to find the golden key. But of that, huh, there was no sign. She was about to give up in despair when suddenly she saw there was a plain wooden box. She opened the box 
Inside she found the golden key. She took the key and came out of the cave and was reunited with third daughter. And together they came to the gate. And to her delight, the golden key fitted perfectly. And together, the two young women took hold of that gate, and with all their strength, they lifted it up. And as soon as the gate was open, then the water began rushing out. The water came rushing out. The water was going all the way down. So the two women began to take rocks and stones and throw them in and to create a dam. And then the water became a gentle, steady flow. And Musin was happy, for she knew that now there would always be water in her village. But when the dragon king found that his golden key had been stolen, he was furious, and he banished his third daughter from the palace and the lake. And so, third daughter of the Dragon King came to live with Musin in the village. And ever after, these two good friends would work together in the fields, and as they did, they would sing their songs. And to this day, I'm told, on the 22nd day of Eth, the seventh month, the women who live in the village around the Horse Ear Mountain will come and gather and they will sing the songs in order to celebrate the life and friendship of the third daughter of the Dragon King and the very resourceful Musa. 